Welcome back. Today we will continue our discussion about cosmic and natural phenomena. Today we are going to talk about volcano show as it formed. Why does this phenomenon occur and what are the areas most prone to volcanoes? Volcano. A volcano is a rupture in the crust of a planetary mass object, such as Earth, that allows hot lava, volcanic ash, and gases to escape from a magma chamber below the surface. On Earth, volcanoes are most often found where tectonic plates are diverging or converging, and most are found underwater. For example, a mid-ocean ridge, such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, has volcanoes caused by divergent tectonic plates, whereas the Pacific Ring of Fire has volcanoes caused by convergent tectonic plates. Volcanoes can also form where there is stretching and thinning of the crust's plates, such as in the East African Rift and the Wells Gray Clearwater Volcanic Field and Rio Grande Rift in North America. Volcanism away from plate boundaries has been postulated to arise from upwelling diapers from the core mantle boundary, 3,000 kilometers 1,900 miles deep in the Earth. This results in hotspot volcanism, of which the Hawaiian hotspot is an example. Volcanoes are usually not created where two tectonic plates slide past one another. Large eruptions can affect atmospheric temperature as ash and droplets of sulfuric acid obscure the sun and cool the Earth's troposphere. Historically, large volcanic eruptions have been followed by volcanic winters which have caused catastrophic famines. According to the theory of plate tectonics, Earth's lithosphere, its rigid outer shell, is broken into 16 larger and several smaller plates. These are in slow motion, due to convection in the underlying ductile mantle, and most volcanic activity on Earth takes place along plate boundaries, where plates are converging and lithosphere is being destroyed or are diverging and new lithosphere is being created. At the mid-ocean ridges, two tectonic plates diverge from one another as hot mantle rock creeps upwards beneath the thinned oceanic crust. The decrease of pressure in the rising mantle rock leads to adiabatic expansion and the partial melting of the rock causing volcanism and creating new oceanic crust. Most divergent plate boundaries are at the bottom of the oceans, and so most volcanic activity on the Earth is submarine, forming new sea floor. Black smokers, also known as deep sea vents, are evidence of this kind of volcanic activity. Where the mid-oceanic ridge is above sea level, volcanic islands are formed, such as Iceland. Convergent plate boundaries. Subduction zones are places where two plates usually an oceanic plate and a continental plate, collide. The oceanic plate subducts, dives beneath the continental plate, forming a deep ocean trench just offshore. In a process called flux melting, water released from the subducting plate lowers the melting temperature of the overlying mantle wedge, thus creating magma. This magma tends to be extremely viscous because of its high silica content, so it often does not reach the surface but cools and solidifies at depth. When it does reach the surface, However, a volcano is formed. Thus subduction zones are bordered by chains of volcanoes called volcanic arcs. Typical examples are the volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire, such as the Cascade Volcanoes, or the Japanese Archipelago, or the Sunda Arc of Indonesia. Hotspots. Hotspots are volcanic areas thought to be formed by mantle plumes, which are hypothesized to be columns of hot material rising from the core mantle boundary. As with mid-ocean ridges, the rising mantle rock experiences decompression melting which generates large volumes of magma. Because tectonic plates move across mantle plumes, each volcano becomes inactive as it drifts off the plume, and new volcanoes are created where the plate advances over the plume. The Hawaiian Islands are thought to have been formed in such a manner, as has the Snake River Plain, with the Yellowstone caldera being the part of the North American plate currently above the Yellowstone hotspot. However, the mantle plume hypothesis has been questioned. Continental rifting. Sustained upwelling of hot mantle rock can develop under the interior of a continent and lead to rifting. Early stages of rifting are characterized by flood basalts and may progress to the point where a tectonic plate is completely split. A divergent plate boundary then develops between the two halves of the split plate. However, rifting often fails to completely split the continental lithosphere, such as in an Olakogan, and failed rifts are characterized by volcanoes that erupt in unusual alkali lava or carbonatites. Examples include the volcanoes of the East African Rifts. The most common perception of a volcano is of a conical mountain, spewing lava and poisonous gases from a crater at its summit. 
however, this describes just one of the many types of volcano. The features of volcanoes are much more complicated and their structure and behavior depends on a number of factors. Some volcanoes have rugged peaks formed by lava domes rather than a summit crater, while others have landscape features such as massive plateaus. Vents that issue volcanic material, including lava and ash, and gases, mainly steam and magmatic gases, can develop anywhere on the landform, and may give rise to smaller cones such as Pu'o'o on a flank of Hawaii's Kilauea. Other types of volcano include cryovolcanoes, or ice volcanoes, particularly on some moons of Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune, and mud volcanoes, which are formations often not associated with known magmatic activity. Active mud volcanoes tend to involve temperatures much lower than those of igneous volcanoes except when the mud volcano is actually a vent of an igneous volcano. Fissure Vents Volcanic fissure vents are flat, linear fractures through which lava emerges. Shield Volcanoes Shield volcanoes, so named for their broad, shield-like profiles, are formed by the eruption of low-viscosity lava that can flow a great distance from a vent. They generally do not explode catastrophically, but are characterized by relatively gentle effusive eruptions. Since low viscosity magma is typically low in silica, shield volcanoes are more common in oceanic than continental settings. The Hawaiian volcanic chain is a series of shield cones, and they are common in Iceland, as well. Lava domes. Lava domes are built by slow eruptions of highly viscous lava. They are sometimes formed within the crater of a previous volcanic eruption, as in the case of Mount St. Helens but can also form independently, as in the case of Lassen Peak. Like stratovolcanoes, they can produce violent, explosive eruptions, but the lava generally does not flow far from the originating vent. Cryptodomes Cryptodomes are formed when viscous lava is forced upward causing the surface to bulge. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was an example. Lava beneath the surface of the mountain created an upward bulge, which later collapsed down the north side of the mountain, Cinder cones. Cinder cones result from eruptions of mostly small pieces of scoria and pyroclastics. Both resemble cinders, hence the name of this volcano type, that build up around the vent. These can be relatively short-lived eruptions that produce a cone-shaped hill perhaps 30 to 400 meters, 100 to 1,300 feet high. Most cinder cones erupt only once. Cinder cones may form as flank vents on larger volcanoes, or occur on their own. Paracotin in Mexico and Sunset Crater in Arizona are examples of cinder cones. In New Mexico, Calle del Rio is a volcanic field of over 60 cinder cones. Based on satellite images, it was suggested that cinder cones might occur on other terrestrial bodies in the solar system too, on the surface of Mars and the Moon. But do you see? Is there any benefit from these volcanoes for humans? We will see in the next video. Goodbye.